Hello, my name is Jasmine Park, and I'm a policy fellow for the Future of Privacy Forum. Welcome to our module on teaching security to your students. Through this module, you will understand the need to teach students about security, recognize the cybersecurity risks students face, go over some security tips for students and key topics to cover, and discover useful lesson plans, activities, and other resources to adapt for your classroom. First of all, what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is the art of protecting networks, devices, and data from unauthorized access or criminal use, and the practice of ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of information. Confidentiality means data should not be accessed or read without authorization. It ensures that only authorized parties have access. Integrity means data should not be modified or compromised in any way. It assumes that data remains in its intended state and can only be edited by authorized parties. Availability means that data should be accessible upon legitimate request. It ensures that authorized parties have unimpeded access to data when required. Without proper cybersecurity protections, students risk malware erasing their entire system, an attacker breaking into their system and altering files, an attacker using their computer to attack others, or an attacker stealing their information to cause financial or reputational harm. When students use the internet, they expose themselves to risks through the mere act of accessing a web page, communicating online, or downloading data. It's sometimes possible for websites they access, people on the same network, or even third parties to figure out their location or other information about them. Bad actors can watch their browser, location, and other usage patterns to try to figure out who they are. Without taking the proper precautions, it's difficult, if not impossible, for students to fully protect themselves against online risks. New online risks also crop up all the time, so it's important to stay vigilant. Potential harms of compromised accounts and information include theft, reputational damage, and falling victim to scams. As we seek to familiarize students with the topic of cybersecurity, here are some guiding questions to get started. What is cybersecurity? Why is cybersecurity important? What are confidentiality, integrity, and availability? How can we protect our information from unauthorized access by hackers or other bad actors? Now, please take a moment to watch this video on the anatomy of an attack by Cisco. Key topics to cover when teaching security to your students include creating strong passwords, securing networks and devices, and being cautious against malware such as viruses, scareware, ransomware, and spyware, and scams like phishing attacks. Included are some examples of lesson plans and activities you can adapt for your classroom. So how can you help your students keep their information secure online? Here are some tips from the Canadian Civil Liberties Education Trust's Peer Privacy Protector Project. While created for Canadian youth, much of the information applies to all students. So first, you can encourage your students to update their apps, computer, and phone software whenever they have the option. Updates include security patches that close holes in the software that make it easier for someone to hack them. So encourage your students to keep their no notifications on so they know when to update their software. Next, encourage your students to use two-factor authentication to access their accounts. This may entail um, an extra step with their accounts sending them a text message to verify that it's actually them before they log into their accounts. So when using different platforms for your classroom, ensure that students are securing their information by using TFA. Next, encourage students also to clear their cache. So there's a lot of information that's being saved in their browsers, like cookies or searches or their web history that they do not clear on a regular basis when exposed could point to students' home addresses, their family information, and other personal data that they want to keep private. Next, use strong passwords and keep them secret. 
we had some advice on how to create them with past phrases linking together different items on a table or things that students see on their way to and from school. So those are some tips that you can also impart to your students as well. Next, turn off the save password feature in browsers. If we are not sure if the browsers have completely secure systems, this may prove a treasure trove for bad actors who would like to access students' accounts. Next, put a sticky note on your camera. Encourage students to um, take precautions when it comes to their cameras on their computers or phones or other devices as well. Whistleblowers in the past revealed that there are organizations that can spy on people through the front-facing cameras. Um, and if the NSA, NSA can, then potentially other bad actors can as well. Finally, think before leaving private data in the cloud. Make sure that students are aware of whether their storage services have privacy policies that will protect their information. Just because it's in the cloud does not mean that it is secure. So make sure that students are aware of the potential risks when storing data in the cloud. Now let's figure out how we can impart what we've learned together to our students. First, consider the websites, apps, devices, and networks your students use in the traditional and virtual classrooms. Which of the security tips that we covered did you find the most useful? Create a plan to integrate those security best practices into your lessons and interactions with your students. For example, with online learning, I imagine many of you are needing students to create new accounts on an approved EdTech tool or platform. Plan to teach them how to create strong passwords and use two-factor authentication when creating their accounts. You can now pause your video to take five minutes to complete this activity or complete the activity after the video. We've reached the end. I'll leave you with some useful resources with great lesson plans and activities for you to integrate into your security lesson plans.